Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, we've got Lavier mics on today. I think that's what they're called. <laughs> device to try to improve the audio in the car and hopefully it does you'll know anyway if you're listening to this <laughs> you won't be telling me to speak up then hopefully not hopefully not right so we're not straying out of the county today we're staying we're going to our county town in fact northampton to a museum another one that we didn't know existed what, what is it suzanne um let me put these on Abington Park Manor House Museum. Yes, and there's some history of Northampton, uh, including the leather industry, which um, I've had a little bit to do with in the past. Northamptonshire was well known for the shoe industry, of course. But there's also a museum for the for the county regiment, the Northamptonshire Regiment, uh, which my father was in during the Second World War and my grandfather was in during the First World War. And when I was researching last night, I found a little link, didn't I? You did. Suzanne's father served in the Seaforth Highlanders, which is a Scottish regiment, during the Second World War. And although um, the two battalions in question were not the ones that my father or Suzanne's father was in, there is a link because the second battalion of the Northamptonshire Regiment and the second battalion of the Seaforth Highlanders were in the um, same brigade, the 17th brigade uh, during the Second World War. So a little bit of a link there that wasn't aware of. Um, anyway, what else did it say there? Wasn't it a lunatic asylum or yeah, something? Yeah, it was um, in 1841 it was sold and its contents auctioned off and it was converted into a lunatic asylum in 1845 directed first by Thomas Octav Octavius Octav Octavia where well, it's got a S on the end, Paul. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Thomas Octavius Pritchard. Right. And later his cousin Thomas Pritchard. And like everything we seem to go to visit, there's even a Shakespeare link, isn't there? Yeah, there is. It was once home to William Shakespeare's granddaughter, Elizabeth Bernard, who's buried in 1670 in the adjacent um, church. Right. Okay, and it, then of course it's, like I said, it's got the um, local shoe industry, isn't it? Um, I'm just having a little look. Anyway, we'll be there soon. We've just been to get something to eat. Um, we went into a couple of pubs, didn't we? Yeah, packed. <clears throat> and even though we've got this um, situation in the country at the moment with the virus, the pubs were packed, um, so we ended up going to Billing Garden Centre. Not the coronavirus. That's the one. <laughs> so we ended up going to um, the Billing Shed Calf at Billing Center. Garden Centre. And Suzanne was not impressed with the chilli. You had a jacket potato with chilli, didn't you? Um, with no mince. Yeah. With just tomatoes and um, beans. kidney beans. There was no mince in it. And we had the same situation that we've had for years. Um, anybody that knows me, especially Suzanne, knows that I enjoy salads. Over 10 years ago, I made a decision I don't eat crisps. Uh, I didn't eat chis chips for 10 years um, or anything like that. And I just basically eat salads. And the f over the years, going in for pub lunches and things like that, when I've had a meal, a salad, cheese salad, for example, and I say to them, which I got boring bored of saying and so did Suzanne was yeah, look listening. can I have plenty of salad I do like <laughs> salad I know it's weird but I do Suzanne would get a meal and have a side salad and more often than not her side salad was bigger than my salad it's 
And today I ask for my cheese jacket potato with plenty of salad, extra salad please. And when it came out, it had exactly the same amount of salad as Suzanne's. <laughs> so give up, totally give but up. But you did have my tomatoes and cucumber, yeah. so it made it a bit bigger. Yeah, I mean it's not really the point is it, because quite often they charge know, more for yeah, extra salad yeah. and then, but we've given up. I think the worst we ever had was Link, was it Lincoln? Yeah, we'd been to York Cathedral and on the way back we stopped off at Lincoln and we went in that pub, didn't we, right behind Lincoln Cathedral. Yeah. And the lady was in there and I explained to her and said about it. And she said, don't you worry, love. She knew all about she it. She knew all about she? it and you wait till you see my salad. Well, when she came out, I didn't say anything because I just couldn't find the words, could we? <laughs> it, it was on a tea plate. What do you say to these people? <laughs> anyway. Get over the salad. Enjoy salads. During the week, uh, well, I never eat breakfast unless we're in a hotel, um, but that's the only time. I never have breakfast during the week. I never feel like it. And I normally have a salad around about 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. And then I'll have a stir fry, but not fried, strangely enough. I know it sounds even worse, doesn't it? But it's a stir fry mixture, a vegetable mixture. And I normally do it in a pan. And guess what? I eat cakes. <laughs> yeah, she goes to Slimming World, but she eats cakes. Anyway, um, that will do for now because we're just coming into Northampton. I need to concentrate and let's hope we've got some content in this museum, but we'll know soon. So catch you in a minute. So this must be the church that who's buried in, Suzanne? William Shakespeare's granddaughter, Elizabeth Bernard. Yeah, Suzanne was on about the church next door. The museum is over that way. So this is the church and <clears throat> Elizabeth Bernard, yeah. or Barnard, I noticed it said, didn't it? Two ways of spelling it. Right, what's the chances unless we get pointed in the right direction? <laughs> right, well, we don't think so there's the museum, and this is the church that Shakespeare's, what is it? Granddaughter. Granddaughter. There's an ex Oh yeah, there's another one over there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, anyway, so uh, Shakespeare's granddaughter. granddaughter is buried in here somewhere but we have no idea where. So that's Abingdon Park over there in Northampton. And opposite, up there, is the museum that we're going to have a look around. It doesn't look very open, does it? No. World War One Memorial. Unveiled by the Mayor of Northampton, Councillor Tony Ansell, on the 11th of the 11th, 2018, to commemorate the centenary of Armistice Day. They shall not grow. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's one outside the Andal Salon. Well, this is unexpected. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Come on, show off, Mrs. Peacock. Or Mr. Peacock. Thank you. 
Well, this is an unexpected bonus, isn't it? So we're now around the back of the church, as you can see there, and we believe this is, yeah, Abingdon Park Museum. Abingdon in film and photography. The Abingdon area has been recorded on film and photography since the end of the 19th century. By the time Abingdon Park opened in 1897, photography had become a popular way to record local scenes and events. That must be old Northampton. <laughs> the military galleries explore how the Northamptonshire Regiment and the Northamptonshire Yeomanry were formed and the roles they played within the British Army. The Northamptonshire Regiment was a page unit of the army made up of battalions of soldiers on foot, known as infantry. They served from 1741 and became part of the Royal Anglian Regiment in 1964. They remain active within the army today. Yes, they do. Memoirs of the Siege of Quebec and Total Subversion of Canada. Well, the regiment certainly served all around the world. Gibraltar, 1778. The Northamptonshire Yeomanry. The onset of the French Revolutionary Wars and the consequent threat of invasion led to the formation of a number of volunteer territorial forces, including cavalry. The Northamptonshire Yeomanry Cavalry consisted initially of six troops under the command of the Earl Spencer. Oh. Can you just tell me what that dead badger's on his head for? <laughs> Don't know, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> The Northamptonshire Army Cavalry, consisting initially of six troops under the command of the Earl Spencer, was established with royal approval on the 16th of May 1794. This was increased later to nine troops. Each troop was commanded by a member of one of the notable families in the area. A troop, of course, not being just one man. Women in Britain say go. <laughs> Look at the colours. Yeah. It, it will all be over by Christmas. Huh. 1914-18 war. Right, this is more like how our parents would have been dressed during the Second World War. Although your dad's out in Burma would have been a different battle dress to that. That was the itchy, awful one that they used to wear in Europe. That's the uniform of General Sir John Akehurst, KCB, CBE. Would you like to have a little trot around in a carriage like that?
I am familiar with a couple of those companies that had dealings with in the past. Crockett and Jones, Mobs Miller. What room is this, does it say? The oak room. I think it is. I wonder why. A lot of craftsmanship in these oak panels, isn't there? Mm. William Thursby was a successful lawyer. He purchased Abington as his country house, which demonstrated his status and wealth. This room was added in the 1670s as part of the two-storey extension that ran along the south front of the building and included the staircase and entrance lobby. Although the build in the latest architectural fashion, he retained and reused the oak panelling. The panels are much older than the room and were originally features of the Tudor house. Wow, look at this staircase in there. These old toys, Suzanne. Put that light out. <laughs> Setting up home. furniture like this from my granddad's. Do you remember my dad's old mangled finger? I do, yeah. When he was little, he put it in one of them mangles and that's what happened to it. Hmm. Why we called it his mangled finger. <laughs> yeah. Hardly surprising though, putting it in <laughs> that, is it? <laughs> it was only about eight. Yeah. So, there we go. Suzanne, what did you think of the yeah, Abaddon Park Museum? I liked Sorry, it. it. Yeah, I did like it. And Interesting. What? Yeah, I didn't know it was uh, here. Me neither. No. And the sun's coming out. The sun has got me. <laughs> right, so, do we need some shopping? Well, we always need shopping. Do we have to go and get 500 rolls of toilet roll? No. No. <laughs>